Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. And in this video I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to do curve fitting in MATLAB. Now a lot of us use Excel for curve fitting because it's easy. You just pull your data in or calculate your data and hit the add trend line button and off you go. It's easy, you can get results quickly, and you can get an idea of how good your curve fit is. If there's a problem, it's that the number of curve fits available to you is limited. A lot of times a better way to do this is in MATLAB. There's this cool interactive tool called CF Tool, I assume for Curve Fit Tool, that makes curve fitting easy and gives you lots and lots of latitude to explore different curve fits. So let me show you how this works. To start, we're going to need some data. And uh, you can see down here in this command history window, I was playing around with uh, functions to see if I could find something that was well behaved but clearly wasn't any familiar form. And it worked. So let me recall the commands I used. So I set x to go from 1 to 25. And y was this function here. It's got a square root and an exponential and then uh, this crazy x to the 0 0.6 power. It doesn't mean anything physical as far as I know. And it's clearly not any familiar form. It's clearly not a polynomial or anything else. So if we want to fit it, it the fit has to be approximate unless we use exactly that form. So let's start up the CF tool window. All you have to do is type in CF tool and hit return. And there it is, pops up for you. And there's nothing in it yet first thing you have to do is tell it what data you want it to work on. Well, I created two vectors here, x and y. So for x data, I'll just use x, and for y data, I'll use y. Notice that it works in 3D and you can weight your data. I'm not going to do that here because that's more uh, complication than I want to deal with right now. So it defaults to a degree one polynomial, which is just a straight line. And you can see my data points are right there. And it's kind of polynomial-ish, I guess. Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's go to degree 2, which is a parabola. Well, closer, but still not very good. You can see over here, here's the form of the function I'm using for the curve fit. There's the parameters, including confidence bounds. And there's some uh, information there to tell you how good the fit is. The one you're probably most familiar with is that r squared and 0.899 pretty much. Well, that number suggests it's okay. This plot suggests, eh, maybe not. So let's bump the the uh, degree up a little bit. Mm, it still doesn't look good. One more. Ooh, that doesn't look too bad. Now my R square is 0.999 something. Now this you could have done in Excel just as easily. It'll give you a fourth order polynomial no problem. But like I said, there's a lot of other choices available to you here. So let's click on polynomial, scroll to the top. Let's try exponential. Well, that's a, not a very good way to do this. There's, there's no reason to think this would act like an exponential. And of course, it's terrible. Uh, Fourier, let's go to uh, power. That's not going to be any good. Let's go to rational. Rational polynomials can be very powerful for curve fitting. So this is a 0 over order 1. Well, not too surprising. That's not very good. Let's go to a 2 over 1. Well, better, but not great. Let's go to 3 over 1. Better, but not great. 4 over 1. Eh, now I've got this uh, discontinuity in there. So maybe rational polynomials aren't the way to go here either. Okay, I can keep fiddling around with that. One thing I was uh, looking at earlier, if you go to sum of sines, well, this is clearly not a sine wave, but it might be a sum of sine waves. And you just have to go to order two. That starts looking pretty good. You know, it's not quite right, but it's close, and it's a very simple equation. There's the coefficients over there. And r squared is 0.998. Well, let's just bump it up one more. And that's spot on. Okay, R squared of 0 0.9999. That's a very good curve fit. There's some others. We try a power series probably isn't going to work too well. And it doesn't. Linear fitting, we tried that. You can do a custom equation. And this is this is fun. It defaults to a simple exponential. Well, 
that doesn't look to me like it's going to be an exponential. So let's let's add another term to it. And the way this is set up, any letter is assumed to be a parameter. So right now it's got a, b, and c. So let's say d times x to the e. Now I want to be real careful here. Uh, that e is not 2.718 e that's just some num some uh, variable named e well it doesn't look too good either maybe it would be better without all this stuff let's let's try something else here there's a simple power uh, function hmm how about that Hmm, that doesn't look too bad. But you see what's going on here. I can make up functions, and as long as I identify the coefficients as a, b, c, d, etc., uh, this doesn't have any problems working with them. So just add a constant there to see what that does. That eh, doesn't help much at all. So let's look at fit options here. We can uh, let it calculate more. Maximum function evaluations right now is 600. I've got a reasonably fast computer. Let's make it 2,000. And maximum iterations is 400. Let's make it 2,000. Increasing the number of iterations or the number of calculations doesn't really help because this isn't a very appropriate form of curve fit. It looks like D is the problem here. So let's uh, go here and start looking at these coefficients. Its initial guess is 0 0.66. Let's make that 0 0.01 and see if that we start at a different place if that helps. Nah, it really doesn't. So let's get rid of that. Well, I've got uh, A, B, and C. So D sine oops, no, E star X. And remember, this E is just some variable named E. It is not E 2.718 E. Okay, so there we go again. Now it's, you can see the wiggle there. This is a little better still not a great fit. So for right now it looks like my uh, sum of signs is probably the best choice right now. So when you're done, when you decide to click out of this, if you can, uh, before you leave, you can save your curve fit session so you can come back to it later. You can even generate code from it. And if you forget to do that and you click here, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to save this curve fit session? I'll say yes. I'll call call it YouTube curve fit example. Hit save and it should pop up. There it is right there. So I can open up MATLAB again, load this file, and keep working whenever I choose. So there you have it. I hope this helps. The curve fit tool in MATLAB. It's very handy, more powerful than Excel, it's easy to use. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.